You probably don't think of the notorious Italian mafia and the US government as having all too much in common. One is a pillar of the most powerful nation on earth, creating and upholding laws that are perceived as good for the collective of the population. The other is a nefarious criminal organization that, at its peak, fought to become even more influential than the government through less than desirable means. You can't find a whole lot of examples of more differing groups than these two, exact opposites. However, many are unaware that the Mafia and the US government actually have worked together quite a few times behind the scenes, dating all the way back to World War II. Welcome back to Facts Fanatics. We are dedicated to bringing you the most shocking and downright unbelievable real-life incidents that stunned the world. Today, we're looking into the dark and mysterious past of shocking connections between the notorious Mafia and the US government. Two organizations that should be opposing rivals may not be as bitter toward one another as you may think. On that note, we're going to discuss four times that the US government and the mob work together to achieve a common goal. Let's get into it. Wartime is extremely difficult in any nation, and the United States is no different. A lot of previously unheard of activity can become commonplace during war. Anything goes in a time of such stress, including making deals with criminal organizations for the preservation of the country. World War II, perhaps the most important war ever fought, was no different. In the early days of World War II, US officials were growing increasingly concerned that Italian and German spies were gaining access to the US through New York City and plotting a sabotage of the eastern city's ports. The government's issues to have spies investigate and gain intel on the plan were to no avail, so the US decided to get creative. The US Navy reached out to associates of Salvatore C. Lusanio, a top-ranking Italian mob boss who was serving a 50-year sentence at the time. They agreed to partner together on Operation Underworld with the Mafia in order to ensure no foreign agents were infiltrating the Mafia-controlled docks as well as ensuring there would be no labor strikes on the docks for the duration of the war. As a result of the partnership, Luciano also had his sentence commuted, although there is some skepticism regarding how much valuable information Luciano was able to provide to the Navy throughout the operation. He did end up being released and deported back to Italy in 1946, proving that he'd likely handed over at least something of value to the government. US officials also leaned heavily on the help of the Mafia during the course of Operation Husky, or the Allied Invasion of Sicily, which took place in the summer of 1943. Luciano and his associates were able to weed out a number of Sicilian operatives who provided detailed maps of the nation, as well as other critical details that proved vital in the US's success in the operation. Another Mafia boss, Vito Genovese, lent his services to the US military and became an official interpreter and advisor to US officials in Naples. The invasion, heavily aided by the assistance provided by the Mafia, was an overwhelming success, with a full Axis retreat beginning just over two weeks after the initial Allied landings. Many war scholars agree that the services that the Mafia provided in the planning and execution of the invasion were crucial to its relative ease. In 2007, the girlfriend of the deceased high-ranking member of the Mafia, Gregory Scarpa, testified in court that he had been recruited by ranking FBI officials to retrieve the bodies of three murdered civil rights workers in Mississippi in 1964. The murders had been carried out by members of the notorious Ku Klux Klan, and the FBI stood to benefit from keeping them under wraps, thus partnering again with the Mafia. The girlfriend stated under oath that she had witnessed Scarpa receiving a gun and multiple cash payments from the FBI firsthand, and that he had threatened a leading KKK member by holding the gun inside his mouth and forcing him to divulge the location of the missing bodies. Though similar stories have been circulating for years, there is to this day no official record of the success of the retrieval of the bodies. Recently declassified official U.S. documents reveal perhaps the most notorious instance of the U.S. government partnering with the Italian Mafia. In the 1960s, communist Cuba was gaining steam, and their young enigmatic leader Fidel Castro was proving quite the problem for then-president of the United States, John F. Kennedy. These documents reveal a secret partnership between the two organizations on an assassination attempt on the Cuban leader. In the wake of World War II, the US's confidence as the world's leading superpower 
took an early hit when the USSR adopted Cuba as their own vessel, a nation whose leadership shared and spread similar communist values. This obviously was seen as a threat to the US, with Cuba being located just a few hundred miles off the coast of Florida. President John F. Kennedy decided to get creative in his problem-solving, and yet another deal was brokered with the Mafia to have mobsters Sam Giancana and Johnny Roselli conduct a state-sponsored assassination of Castro. Robert Mayhew, a CIA buffer, approached Roselli and Giancana and proposed the CIA's $150,000 kill fee for Castro, which the two gangsters turned down before stating that they would carry it out for free. Giancana and Roselli had their own motives for assassinating the dictator, even though they claimed to have patriotic justifications for doing so. When Castro came to power, he shut down the mafia's highly profitable casinos in Havana, which came at a high cost to the mobsters. Giancana and Roselli also assumed that working with the government on such a high-risk mission would keep the government off their backs, leaving them to pursue their criminal activity stress-free. The JFK documents reveal that the Mafia pair repeatedly failed to successfully carry out the hit on Castro. One would-be hired assassin was provided poison pills to complete the task at hand, but he allegedly got cold feet before he could sneak them into Castro's food in Havana. Other unsuccessful commando operations launched from Florida were attributed either to bad timing or bad luck. CIA-trained fighters were frequently imprisoned and occasionally executed after being caught attacking near Cuba's coastline during nighttime raids. Castro's network of double agents and supporters in Florida also worked to thwart CIA efforts. Some of the conspirators who worked with the two gangsters also betrayed them to further their own objectives. A second attempt involving shooting the Cuban leader was planned. However, when the US conducted the Bay of Pigs invasion in early 1961, this second attempt was scrapped. While the Mafia certainly stood to gain from the downfall of communist Cuba, who had recently devolved their casino business of which the Mafia was heavily involved, no successful hit was ever conducted, and Fidel Castro passed away in 2016 at the age of 90 from natural causes. One may assume that the US government and the feared Italian Mafia have little to no crossover, but the truth is that they have worked together for decades at this point on various operations and plots. From keeping salacious information under wraps to attempting to assassinate a world leader, it is now a known fact that the two opposite entities can certainly pull their differences aside and work together toward a result that is mutually beneficial, regardless of the moral ramifications the partnerships cause. What do you think about the Mafia's partnership with the US government? Were the circumstances enough to justify the partnerships, or did the government go too far? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one.